Welcome to 22 Sounds preview of the upcoming vinyl release highlights. I'm Manu, co-owner of 22 Sound, the independent record store in Mandeville, Louisiana. And in this video, I want to talk about what we think are the highlights of vinyl release week, September 29th, 2023. This is something we are planning on doing going forward on a frequent basis because there are just so many records coming out any given week. It's really hard to keep up, but that's what we're here for. That's our job. We're of course constantly checking, making sure we get the coolest records into the store. And one of the things about our store is we really wanna keep it a nice mix of the classics, whether they're reissues or even originals, but also new music because there is just a lot of great music coming out um, on a regular basis and when i just look at for instance this week that i'm uh, talking about in this video september 29th there are over 500 titles that are coming out that can be pre-ordered on our website 22soundrecords.com so this is just a little subjective snapshot of what we think are the coolest one coming out in this week of course, all of these records can be ordered on our website, 22soundrecords.com. And of course, this is a YouTube video, so I have to ask you, please subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out a lot, but also that way you can stay up to date with what's coming out and you can get your pre-orders in on time. This is why we're doing it two weeks in advance of the release date. We figured that's enough time to get your pre-orders in, get excited about it. Um, but not too long, so you have to suffer in anticipation for too long. All right, so let's get right in. We're starting with probably the biggest release of the week, as far at least commercially speaking. Ed Sheeran is releasing a new album. It's called Autumn Variations. Ed, of course, has been in the news quite a bit recently. Had a big lawsuit against him because he was accused of stealing uh, Marvin Gaye's Let's Get It On for one of his songs. And I gotta say, I've been following that quite a bit and I thought it's, I'm, I'm really glad that he won this. I think this could have set a really dangerous precedent had he lost this lawsuit because it kind of boiled down to them basically saying he can't use a certain core progression. Of course, this is kind of simplified, but his case or his argument was basically that core progressions are like building blocks for songwriters that can freely be used. There's only a certain amount of variations that can really be used at least in, you know, in Western music. What we're used to, there's only 12 notes, there's only so many combinations. And he compared it to basically saying that a painter can't copyright a certain color, a certain combination of color. And I think that was actually a pretty good way to put it um that i'm I'm glad he wanted if you, if you want to hear a little bit more about it of course there's a lot of articles about it on there but something i listened to the other day some rolling stone podcast i think it's called music now they had a little episode about it with some songwriters that weighed in on it it's very interesting to hear their opinion on it and yeah i think it's very important no matter whether you're a fan of ed sheeran or not i think that's very important that he was able to win that lawsuit so here we are with a new set of songs from him um only about a year i think after his last album the guy is pretty fast i gotta say next up is kk's priest that's of course kk downing of the almighty judas priest or formerly of judas priest um he and glenn tipton of course were one of the most legendary metal guitar duos in metal history this is his brand new album with his current project called KK's Priest. The record is called The Singer Writes Again. Then we have Steven Wilson, mostly known as, you know, the guy from Porcupine Tree. Um, of course, he also has a very um, big uh, solo career, has been uh, releasing a lot of albums under his own name. This is the new one called Harmony Codex. Animal Collective, I feel like it's really hasn't been super long since they released their last album either. Um, they're coming out with a new album, it's called Isn't It Now? Then we have Ormond Hammer, 
with their brand new album, We Buy Diabetic Test Strips. That's one that I'm really looking forward to, I have to say. Um, Armand Hammer is a hip hop duo consisting of uh, Billy Woods and Lucid, um, two of, yeah, probably the best MCs in the game right now. They've been around for a while and they've done a few uh, albums under this Arm & Hammer banner um, as a duo. The last one was, to me, one of the highlights of recent years in hip-hop, um, Harem. It was produced by The Alchemist. So definitely always interesting to see what they're coming up with. To me personally, one of the hip-hop um, highlights of the year, at least in anticipation. We'll see if it's actually as good, but it's definitely one looking forward to hearing. Then we have Code Orange um, with their new album, The Above. Um, one of the lead singles leading up to this album actually features none other than Billy Corgan. Um, then we have Blackstone Cherry, they're releasing Screaming at the Sky. And we have already again a new album of Wilco. Um, another band that just released a new album, well, was I think about a year ago, this brand new album called Cousin. Um, and then we have some really interesting reissues as well coming out. Jason Isbell, uh, he released just recently a brand new record. He's um, re releasing the 10th year's any birth, 10th year anniversary of um, maybe his most legendary record, Southeastern. Um, it comes as a quote unquote regular version, but also as a box set. Both can be ordered from us. Then Joe, um, also known as, you know, the guy from Stranger Things, um, <laughs> Joe Keery, um, he is releasing 2020 and Decide, two of his records on vinyl. They've been kind of hard to get. I think there were releases of that before, kind of limited. So here's a widespread release of both of those albums. Then another big uh, classic that's getting a reissued treatment, 30 year anniversary of Green Day's Dookie. And um, this is really an album we've had in the store quite a few times over the years. And it's uh, still a record that's being discovered by a new generation. Um, has aged really well and I wonder if some people might have been a little surprised that it did age as well as it did. It uh, comes just like Jason Isbell's Southeastern as a regular version, just a record, but it's also a big box set. The box set is actually an indie exclusive too, so you can't get it at even Walmart or Target. Support your local record stores getting that if you're interested in it. It's a pretty big box set. Um, Gonna put the links to all of those in the description below if you wanna take a closer look at what it contains. I think it has the Woodstock 94 set on one of the records, a few other live recordings, um, I think some demo versions, so on, of course, a proper album as well. Um, then we have Creator reissuing Pleasure to Kill, maybe the most legendary Creator album, or the one in highest regard by many people. Creator, of course, one of the big thrash metal bands of the 80s. A lot of people, I guess, would say, you know, the Bay Area is probably the first um, association with thrash metal, or original thrash metal in the 80s, but the German scene was actually really interesting too, especially like the big three creator, uh, Destruction, Sodom. They really kind of gave it another spin, were highly influenced, of course, by the original American thrash bands, but yeah, it just really gave it a a different vibe to it um, and Creator still going strong all these years later. Pleasure to Kill is getting the reissue, yeah, almost 40 years later. Um, and speaking of German thrash, Metal Destruction is also reissuing a bunch of their early records. Too many to talk about here in detail. Um, they're coming out on High Roller Records, German label. So check out our website. I'm going to put in one of the links just so that you can get there on our website and then you can see all the other destruction records that are being reissued. There's quite a few of them. Then we have Typo Negative reissuing Slow, Deep and Hard. Typo Negative records, they always go really fast. Um, it's one of those 
things and then sometimes it's really hard to get them back so I'm really excited to get a reissue of of that their debut record. Uh, Steely Dan is moving on with their reissue series. They are reissuing as far as I know what the plan is to reissue really all of their albums they started with their debut I think it was some point last year and they're just kind of continually reissuing those. They're at Asia right now so that's coming out on September 29th as well. Just like, so all of these records I just talked about, they can be pre-ordered on our website, 22soundrecords.com. Get your pre-orders in right then and there. If you're local, of course, and you prefer to just pick it up at the store, uh, just send us an email to orders at 22soundrecords.com or message us, call us. We're always happy to um, take your pre-orders over the phone and or whatever means you would like and keep a uh, hold a copy for you let let you know once they're in the store all right and one thing that we'd like to do as well just as a little add-on is talk a little bit about some records that i personally recently been listening to that that, that i've been really excited about maybe something you would like to check out too me personally, I'm constantly looking for new music. That's probably one of the things I'm most excited about in life in general is just discovering new music, or at least music that's new to me. Sometimes it's old stuff. Um, but so I'm always on the lookout. I'd be happy if you put some comments in um, here below the video and let me know what you're listening to, what you're excited about right now. Always open for recommendations. So here's some of the stuff that I've been excited about. One is the new Quellotag. Hope I'm pronouncing this right. I'm not Norwegian. Um, but uh, yeah, Quellotag, if you're not familiar with them, uh, they started out probably about 10 years or so ago and it was really nice breath of fresh air for the metal scene at the time I found. A lot of people were really excited about them. They somehow found a way to combine some elements of the more extreme metal uh, sword, like, you know, blast beats, pretty harsh vocals with hard rock, basically. It sounded like that shouldn't work, but it did work really well. It was really cool to love, especially those first two albums, um, especially also because it was really not a gimmick. They are great songwriters. Those are super catchy songs, really fun. And yeah, I have to admit that in recent years, I haven't really been paying too much attention to them, but when that new record came out, I listened to it and it's been in my heavy rotation. I think it's absolutely great. It's leaning more to the hard rock side at this point. So this might be something too for you, even if you're not a big fan of the super heavy stuff, um, but just hooks upon hooks man i think that's one thing that are especially scandinavian bands are generally really great at they just have a knack for those big catchy melodies um love the guy that's now the singer shouldn't probably shouldn't call him a new singer he's been in the band i think for about five years uh he was or still is in the good the bad and the zugly too which is another norwegian band um i that's another one that I can really recommend. Um, their album that I've, or that was my introduction to them was Hadeland Hardcore. I think it came out in 2015. What a great record. I think probably the best way to describe it is picture Turbo Negro if they were more of a hardcore band. Kind of has a similar vibe. They don't take themselves super seriously, but man, hooks on pawn hooks on that one too. So <laughs> the guy really knows how to create some catchy choruses. Um, really great record. Highly recommend that as well. Um, another one I've been listening to um, is uh, Sketch 85's uh, new album, He Left Nothing for the Swim Back. Uh, came out a little earlier this year and I have to admit, I actually didn't know about this guy at all. Um, it's an uh, underground hip hop album. Um, he's been around for a while, but somehow stumbled upon that and I gotta say it's a really good album. Jeff Markey is the producer on it and I really love his uh, beats and instrumentals. Kind of has like a, yeah, kind of say almost a little bit of a eerie vibe sometimes on, on his loops that he's using. Really cool. Um, Sketch 85's vocals are very distinct. It's kind of a harsh 
uh, delivery. I uh, really love this uh, album a lot. Great lyrics. And I gotta say, in hip hop, it's kind of like it is in metal too, for example. A lot of great stuff is happening in the underground, kind of away from the big spotlight. It always pays to kind of dig a little deeper and you sometimes find really some great stuff. And that's one of the things I want to do here too. Not only I might talk about some really big names as well on here, but sometimes maybe highlight some stuff from the underground that I discovered that I personally um, really like and really enjoy. And the last one I want to talk about real quick is the new horrendous album. It's called Ontological Mysterium. Um, came out maybe about a month or so ago, I would say. Horrendous is probably best described as progressive death metal, and I think they kind of take the best things from these genres, the riffiness and the harshness of death metal, and combine it with um, that stellar musicianship that you hear often in progressive metal. Um, really, one band that really kind of comes to mind when I'm listening to them on several parts of this record was Queensryche somehow. I don't know if you kind of think the same thing, but somehow Queensryche came to mind on certain parts there, kind of has that vibe, but then they combine it with some really blistering riffing. Um, the vocals are very varied. Most of them are pretty harsh, but uh, he really changes it up quite a bit. And there's even some clean vocals on there. And I have to say, Usually on progressive death metal albums, not the biggest fan of the clean vocals. Most of them are just not great. Maybe you could even call them horrendous. Um, but he is actually a really great singer. I wouldn't have minded actually some more clean vocals. Maybe something for the next one. But what's cool too about this record is um, that they really... Um, it's not too brainy. Sometimes progressive metal can get a little too brainy for me. That where the the feel, the emotion is kind of missing a little bit. But this really sounds like a bunch of guys having fun together, a real true band, and the musicianship is just out of this world. Really great. Uh, to me, one of the highlights of the metal year so far. Hope there's some more cool stuff to come though. All right, so that concludes our first little video of what hopefully evolves into a series. Like I said, the plan is to just kind of frequently let you know what the highlights are of the upcoming vinyl releases. And of course, like I said, you can order all these records right here from us, 22soundrecords.com. I'm gonna put the links in the description of the video. That's the greatest way to support us. But of course, also subscribe to our channel, follow us on our social media. We're on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at the moment. All those little things help us spread the word, help us keep this going. We're a small independent operation We're doing this because we love music so much. And hopefully we can spread that love a little. Let us know in the comments what you're excited about right now. Any feedback is welcome. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Hope to see you soon.